For the what? And what's that? And you use your neck for what? <laughs> Amazing. Are they ready yet? We're streaming just now. No one applauded for you today. No one applauded. Not even lessons. You did not? You don't like him today? I'm sorry? You forgot? Huh? <laughs> you forgot? Will you, hi. Will you prefer I sit? You prefer I sit? Yeah, I prefer to stand, but if I have to sit, I will. Oh, I see. So you forgot? How do you feel about that? I'm sorry? You don't care. <laughs> Whatever, Nick. Did you see his show Friday? Yeah. What do you think? It's always good. Well, it's it, a different feeling on Fridays, right? It seems like he gets more callers on Fridays sometimes. Like they bring up different topics and they seem to be engaged more on Fridays. Did you think he was going to crash? Because no. you were trying to learn to crash, right? The right way to oh, crash. Yeah. Oh, okay. These seats are reserved for all Palm Spring people. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Fellowship. I'm standing today, and uh, it's going to be different. Um, you can get involved by going to our YouTube chat line, and uh, Hate would take your comment on questions and let me know about them, referring to today, in reference to today. All right? Good morning, y'all. How's everybody? Good. Um, any questions? I said I wasn't going to ask that anymore, so y'all never have questions. No questions. What a mess. Anybody? Yes. Anybody have a life? Yes, ma'am. I had a life because I got a chance to look at myself as you and your team were discussing this matter with the parents who went to jail or prison or whatever right. for their child. Um, oh, there were uh, parents convicted this week of uh, their son was accused of going into a high school and shooting it up, also shooting up some people, not all people, and they did. and the court decided to punish the parents for it. And so the parents were convicted 10 to 15 years in prison, according to the report. And we discussed that on the radio show, if the parents should have gone to jail. For ignoring the signs. What? They went to jail for ignoring the signs. They went to jail for ignoring the signs, said Joel. OK. And you say? I say that, you know, I had an opportunity to not take sides because I understood your perspective, Nick's, um, Hake's, everyone on that side of the argument. However, I thought 
uh, Joelle made some very valid points. And I understand what you're saying in terms of the parent shouldn't be responsible for the child. However, there's, there are extenuating circumstances to everything. And I understand what you mean when you say it's an attack on guns and all of that, but I think that, that what makes this uh, case a little bit different is are all the signs that this, this boy displayed. I mean, of course, I don't have all of the information in front of right. me, but not only did uh, were there some very troubling signs, but they also bought, purchased the gun for this child. And it's not like he just, out of the blue, um, developed these mental issues. Those were, I'm sure that there, those were progressive, you know, issues that were present long before they bought him the gun, or I can't be sure, but I suspect. So I just, you know, my whole point in bringing that up is that it really gave me a chance to not take sides and to really look at the information on both sides. And that was um, interesting to me because I do have a tendency to take sides when it comes to, you know, political issues or issues where I feel like someone is being uh, an animal is harmed or a child is harmed, I'll immediately go to the side of the person who did the harming without, yeah. you know, all of the information being in front of me. So I just wanted to share that. And you thought that Joel made a valid point? Absolutely. Well, I don't understand why others, well, I don't understand point, why you made. all don't understand his point. What? I don't understand why you and your panel didn't understand what he was conveying. <laughs> <laughs> And what was the valid point Joel made? <laughs> I, because his point that he was making is that the parents, there was a note involved where blood is gushing out of someone's head or whatever it was. The teacher, you know, saw this. She reported it to the office. They recommended counseling. The parents denied the counseling. The child went to school the next day, killed all these people. And it's easy to say, well, you know, this is an attack on guns, you know, the parents shouldn't go to prison, but, you know, there are parents out there who expected to see their child that day. You know, it's out of order for a child to perish before the parent. So Not that's anymore. deep, and it's traumatizing. It's, it's normal now for the child to die before the parent. Well, I don't know the stats on that, but I know that um, a child of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you don't expect that child to perish before you do as a parent. And I believe that what Joel was, was wanting to communicate, and he, I thought he communicated in a, in, a, in a way that made sense, is that you know these parents have some culpability because they saw the signs. These signs were, were extreme. They weren't just... Um, you know, well, I, mean, I think parents, that maybe something could I mean, be a little bit off. look at their children and think, oh, I see a sign. Well, they should look at their children But how many the parents look at their children and say, these are reserved from people from Riverside, <laughs> Arizona. We're not from Riverside. <laughs> Arizona. Where are you from? Palm Springs. <laughs> Come on, Palm Spring. Come on, those are for you. Okay. <laughs> Put me on the hot seat. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Good. How many parents look at their children and say, "Oh, I see a sign." I'm sure that. Well, they should. If Why? They if they, Why should because parents look at their kids and see for a sign? What? Because they're the parent, and the whole. Ma but and the nobody whole ever answer. look at their children and say, "Let me look for a sign." Well, Jesse, you They're all just really the experts saying that, but normal people don't look for signs. Stupid people say that. The experts, stupid. Not you. They say, they say you should look for a sign. How many parents walk around? Let me see a sign. Or, or buy their son a gun, and they say, "Oh Lord." My well, parents bought me a gun, they didn't give it a second thought. Yeah, but you weren't displaying signs of being erratic and mentally disturbed. Yes, and I was. Thing, I was crazy as a doorknob. I, I, I doubt that you were drawing no, pictures I, no, of I was crazy. the blood gushing out of people's All heads. kids are crazy. Well, Jesse, Sorry, kids. let me just say this last thing. 
Okay, in terms of walking around well, looking don't for Don't listen something. to the experts talking about the parish will be a sign. They are setting you up. Okay, let me just speak to that little and point right there. And then the right fact there. they bought the boy a gun, they are not responsible for that. Yeah, um, nine times out of ten, they're not. to buy your son a gun at a certain age. Not when they're mentally disturbed. I don't but believe who, it is. How many parents know their kids? The parents are mentally disturbed. Everybody mentally disturbed. This boy was an extreme case. And another thing, <sighs> to leave a child at home at eight years old, you at really what? took me over the edge with that one. At eight years old? Yeah. I mean, seriously. That, I was talking to the radio. I was left home phone. at six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And they be gone to work, ain't nobody around. I've never heard of that ever. Yeah. You too? Yeah, yeah I'm growing up and leaving kids at home. That. You too, though? See, all these experts making a fool out of you. They talk all this <laughs> crap. I was left at home at six o'clock, I mean, at six years old, I've eight years heard. old. How many people were left? And I'm like, Mom, I don't have no. See, look, normal people. Okay, well, I've never heard of you that. You listen to the expert, they're confusing you. I, I, okay, well. They, and they don't know what they're talking about. We were always left at home, and I come home, Mama, what a food, I had no food. Look at that stove. Look at your food in that stove. Oh, okay. I have never heard of that. Yeah. I'm so serious. I'm I like, have not heard bizarre. of not leave them at home. <laughs> right. See, look how many people, it's normal, that's abnormal when you listen to the experts. I think my way is normal. What? I think my way is normal. I would what? not leave my child home at eight years old. Why not? I don't feel comfortable with that. That's You've not even a teenager. You've been listening to the experts. Well, well now okay. it's a little different because people come and rob you. And they'll steal your kids. <laughs> they'll steal your kids before they didn't steal kids. They didn't want them. <laughs> So many people want to come in. Sean first. Right on. Uh, I still agree with that. I still believe that Joel made very valid points, and I don't understand why you all don't understand that. Oh, Lord. Yeah, That's all I have to say. Okay. What was the valid point? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Doug first. No, Sean's on the way. Go ahead, Doug. When I was... Easy before 10, I think I was like eight, and I had a sister and a brother at home. I used to have to watch them because my parents would need to go somewhere or leave for a few hours. And yeah. we were just told that, as a matter of fact, I had to cook. Sometimes I had to cook for them, make lunch. Um, we were told that uh, if anybody knocks on that door, don't you dare answer it. Don't you dare tell anybody that we are out. We, we just learned, learned it that way. And they didn't even tell us that. <laughs> they just left us at home. And we didn't have 911 at that time. That, no, now we didn't even have phones. <laughs> yes. You were listening to the expert. They're messing you up. But it doesn't mean that she... I know you were raised wrong. Please, Mike. Well, everyone that I know in my community, that would... Be, I've just never heard of that. What anything could happen. You're not. Your Stop brain isn't even around. developed. <laughs> Stop what? Stop monkeying around. Where were you raised? I in the Midwest, and maybe that has something to do with it. You know, Midwesterners didn't do that. Oh, he asked, "Where were you raised?" You said the Midwest. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Midwestern in the Midwest, we didn't do that, so okay. I'll just leave it at that. No wonder. Yeah. Were you raised in the Midwest too? I mean, I didn't, I've never seen. I mean, maybe see. Well, to make the point is that there was a different time back then to where kids were raised differently. So maybe they were left alone. And the reason why you were given a gun is because you always speak about how you were raised a certain way with values. Your grandparents taught you the right thing, so of course they didn't even raise us with values. Okay, but that's not what you've said multiple times on your show. Right, I made a but, mistake. <laughs> but that's why they were giving they were a gun. They were raising us with them, but they didn't say they were. Right, but that's why you were able to have a gun because you had these certain values instilled no, in you. No, I was fifteen. 
which still makes my point. Uh-uh. That's why you're they didn't say a here, gun. here, fifteen year old boy, you a value, a person of value. They didn't say to that. Because I was knew, old enough to have a gun. Because they knew that you wouldn't do anything crazy with. They it. didn't know for sure. Well, now you guys are just making stuff up. But also, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It also necessarily doesn't mean that the person listening to the experts just because they have an opposing opinion. The, uh, anybody that listens to experts is crazy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> The experts are crazy. They're insane. I promise you, they're insane. They're weakening everybody. They're weakening the family. They're trying to tell you how to raise your kids. They don't even have kids. They had abortions. Mm. 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 I know. And they tell you what you... They have all kinds of people coming and taking your children away from you. Social workers are some of the worst people you ever want to meet. And you can't listen to the world. You can't listen to the government. You can't listen to the preachers. You can't listen to the doctors. The doctors don't even examine you anymore. They just give you pills. And then you can call up pharmacists. I'm running out of pills. Can I come up and get some more? Or then the pharmacy will tell you, your medication is running out. You better come. You never see the doctor in a whole year or two. They are weakening. You can't listen to the world. We've got to overcome the world. Yes. I mean, and I do. I agree with everything you're saying on that. I know that we're not supposed to. I know that we've been lied to from with everything within government, all of it. I totally agree with that 100 percent. But like Joelle was saying, pertaining to your childhood, first of all, you were raised with morals and values. And no, no your parents didn't say that. But I'm just saying, oh, Jesse, yeah. they didn't tell you that. But you knew that you knew that. And they knew and they knew that. So they, they knew that you would be responsible with the gun. They knew instinctively that you would no, be they responsible. Didn't. They weren't thinking that way at all. But if they didn't think that you would be responsible, they probably would not have given you that gun. And they didn't think either way. That just seems very strange that they would not have thought about that to give you a weapon that the could kill someone. The normal age for a, a boy to get a gun in those days was 15 years old, a hunt rifle. And so 50 came, and I got a gun, and I went right out and shot a squirrel in the tree. And Tony was with me, Who the dog. T- oh. <laughs> okay, well, the last thing I want to say, okay, that's fine. because parents had control of their own children. Now the government has control, and the experts have control, and they don't know what they're talking about. They don't care about you anyway. They're weakening you. Yeah, but the thing about it, it, though, is that those were different times. The culture was different. But they just the parents the have the parents to control of their life. The time, the things they can still be the same. But when you turn your life over to these people, then it's still the same time. It's just crazy people telling adults what to do and what not to do. But you don't doubt, though, that those were different Women times. Women tell kid, mother, you need to feed your baby formula. Rather than in the good old days when a woman had a baby, she breastfed right away. They're making money. They're sending you to the store to buy milk rather than using the milk God gave you. So you're saying that It has all the vitamins and everything already in it, and you don't have to worry about if they're going to run out of milk. And now women don't even breastfeed. Who want to have a baby with a woman that won't breastfeed? The expo told them not to, and they all have a deal with the mil- with the formula people. You, you don't realize how much you're losing control of your life listening to someone else. But okay, so but seriously, you're you're saying that there is no difference between parenting when you were growing up and parenting and the, what's shifted in this culture between then and now, and how that that would be impactful in terms of what we're seeing. There's been an increase in violence across the board, not only with children, but adults. And it's a There's palpable a shift difference. because everybody turned their lives over to someone else. But I'm just saying the shift is still there and times were still different. When you were growing up, children were not going into schools killing people. Because the parents raised them. But what, but what, okay, but that still supports my statement that times were different back then, regardless of why they were still different. I know, different. but when will you stop listening to the experts? Well, I don't listen to, I agree with you, you on that You just point. listen to one you have to quote now. 
Well, yeah, because he did have a valid point, and there there are extenuating. He's had several valid rocking. points, and they're extenuating circumstances to everything. They're extenuating circumstances. You gotta so, turn away from the world. But I agree with. I'm saying I agree with you, Jesse, on what you're saying. I know right. that our our gun rights and all of that are being. Um, we, they, they want to take those They're rights away from us. They're every aspect of life now. They tell you how to be a parent, what to feed your children, what not to feed your children, where to go, when to go, what gym to go to, which gym not to go to, how to lose weight, how not to lose weight, how to do this. And everybody go, yeah, okay. Okay, so and you're these saying, people are some of the evil people. Well, let me ask you this then. So at every instance now, from here on out, <clears throat> if there's a child whose parents go to jail for anything that they do, it's an automatic, they want to take your gun rights away. There's not going to be, I thought you said we not only do they want to take your gun rights away, they want to take your freedom away from you. And they want to control you. So there's no extenuating circumstance no. to this? And I, well, I don't, know, I don't know what's going to happen down the road. I'm talking about right now and what it's building up to. They are taking your freedom away, not just guns. So You're what not going to be able to make taking... any decision about your children after a while. So what happens to not taking sides and waiting until you see all of the information in front? I'm you? not taking sides. Well, you took the I'll sides. I'm rejecting the... both. How are you not taking sides, though? Because you said I'm that telling you the parents parent to be parents to your own children, to be independent again, to think and do for yourself. Don't listen to these people. They're just using you for money. I'm trying to encourage people to stand on, on their own. Most people are afraid to stand on their own. It's hard to find a person that would stand on his or her own now. They're looking to some expert or somebody. Yeah, but you said that the parents what? shouldn't have gone to prison. <laughs> he said she's trying to stand on her own. <laughs> but no, she's trying to stand with you. I'm not. I just happen to believe that he has valid points, but, but we've already... See, do you see that every right, every freedom is being taken away from 100%. you? 100%. I totally agree with all of that. So what all do you I'm think is going to happen now that they're, they're, they've got permission to lock up parents? So if a parent sees that a child that they are responsible for, because under the, under the laws of the land, until the child turns 18, the parent is responsible. If a child well, there should be no 12, laws that tell the parents they are responsible. So if a child rams there are their natural car. natural laws that would guide parents. So if a, if a child ram, gets in a car, they're 10 years old, and they just run over five people, and kill all of them. The, no one, it's just... Oh. Put that child in prison. But that's not the law of the land. It, it should be. It used to be. But it isn't. If a, if a child, child got in a car, ran over somebody, that child need to go to prison. They won't run over anybody else. And then they need to work on the roads. Put a chain gang. I just, I, yeah, I think this is like something that I just don't... I'm sorry, but... I don't agree with, that you agree with her at all. Not at all. Right here. No, right here. Do I agree with what exactly before I say uh, yes I'll or no? See. <laughs> you said these are different times, right? Um, I, I do think that back when you was probably raised is as a whole different to now. But then how we're raising our younger two is not as of the world. So I, I see... What Danielle is saying, and I also see what you're saying, so I can't agree with aspects of both. But time is not changing, the people are changing, they're giving up their lives. Yeah, I, I do agree with that, yeah. The time is still the same, it's the people are changing. Yeah. Parents are giving up their lives to let somebody else tell them how to raise their children, and what to do and not to do, and when to do it, and what. You yeah, don't realize the damage that that's causing. No, I totally agree with that, but I feel like if, if as, as parents, if you're not educating yourself in seeing that, that the people are changing or society is changing and you don't kind of stick to your guns that this is still how we're going to raise our children and it is going to be different, then, you know, like how me and Anthony raised these, the younger two is, is very different to how a lot of what we see nowadays. And people are like, oh, you're too strict or you're too this or you're too that. But, it's but like, when they say they give them the finger. We do. And we say we oh, do what good. we want to do, yeah, for sure. But time is not changing. People are changing. Yeah, I can agree people with that. People are weaker today than ever, the men mm -hmm. and the women because they don't have control of their lives anymore. 
And that's what the problem is. And then you've also got all of the technology as well. That wasn't all around when you were That's another up. thing to control you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as the baby pop out of the womb, the mama give it a TV. Because now the mama don't have to be responsible. But if the mother said no, the father said no, we don't want that. When this child grow of age, mm -hmm. let him buy his, or her buy his own phone. I ain't paying for no phone. But I, I do think, though, I can see what Danielle is saying. They tell you, oh, you need to get the kids a phone so you can talk to them at school. By what? You go to school to learn your lesson, ABC. You don't need to be calling mommy all every hour. Yeah, but That's I another setup. They convince you that you need to give your kids a phone for school, and the parents say, okay. Yeah. But right? I do, yes, but I, do, I can see what, a little bit of what Danielle is saying, that... For example, like, let's just say this one. If I think she's, uh, I think I would be able to tell there was a little crazy, like, and I wouldn't be giving her a, a gun if I thought something was a little off. But then, for example, I don't know all the details surrounding that, that kid that did what he did, but the parents have got to be slightly off, right, for him to be off? Parents do not downhill? be looking at the, when a child is crazy, they're crazy, everybody just knows it's a crazy child. They're acting out doing, that's a crazy one. <laughs> but... <laughs> The parents and the kids are the same. They have the yeah, same. Sure. So whatever the parents are doing is the way the kids got to yeah, act. So they don't know that and they're so crazy. And so how is the parents going to know that the kids are crazy when they don't know that they're crazy? So then in the end of the day, then they're all responsible. Right. We don't need the government to do it, though. <laughs> He's doing this in front of the camera. We don't need the government. You need to be responsible for that, not the government. The government people don't have any sense. They are about self and no one else. They care two cents about you. Okay, so in that... It's about making money and getting power. They don't care about you. That makes sense. I agree with you, but... You, you got to see that real clear so you can stop doing what they tell you to do. So in that situation where the parents are a little off and the kid is now off, do you think that the parents should have not gone to... not got locked up? I don't know, because I, I don't know if the parents are off. I don't know what that means. Just because they said about the parent, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, true. It, it, that makes sense? Yeah. All right. The uh, young lady, did you want to say something about that? Uh, no, I'm fine. Oh, okay. Yes. I heard your discussion. What about what Sean said about how the parents should do time? Who said that? Sean. He mentioned. Where, where Sean I don't now? remember exactly. <laughs> He's locked up. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I don't remember exactly what he said, but instead of them getting locked up, that they should do some sort of service or time instead of... The, the government yeah. doesn't have any right to punish you about your children at all. Zero. If the kids get in trouble, the kids go to take the punishment, not the parent. Because the kids got to live with the kid as they grow up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I remember when we were growing up, my grandmother... And We'll always, not always, but would tell us, you go out there, he said when we turn 15 and start going out, taking the girls and stuff. They're like, you go out there, you get in trouble, don't call me. I ain't answering no phone. I'm not coming to see you. I'm not putting money on the books or anything. And that kept me out of trouble. They didn't have to walk around and watch me and the government watch me. I was going to jail if I got in trouble. And then I was going to be working on the road, and my family member was going to be driving down the road, and they're going to see me working on the road, chain gang, and laughing and waving. <laughs> remember those chain gang people? You don't remember that? No. You don't remember that? No. When I become president, I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Did you ever work on the chain gang? Never did. Just did you ever see it when I'm driving down the road? Absolutely. I've seen it quite a those bit. Those good old days. And when those boys got out of jail, they didn't go back. They didn't like no, you know how they said they're in and out now? They didn't go back because they didn't want to fish the roads at no, and, got, and not get paid. Jesse, I see both sides of the, I see what you're saying because the more control the government has, Next thing you know, it can be like a slippery slope to where they take control real of fast yeah, right now. everything. But I do see 
Joel's and Danielle's point a little bit, but in what way? Just um, the parents held accountable on some level, maybe something. But again, I, I'm kind of the boy. Fifteen? How old is the boy? Fifteen? The boy fifteen yeah, years old. I did it. I the did. parents not going to follow him around as he was going on. No, absolutely not. And they're not going to look in the bedroom. Oh, let me look in the bedroom and see what they got. Yeah, I'm kind of, I guess um, <laughs> I'm kind of, I understand your point a little more like the government again. You start with just locking parents up, then what's the next move? It's going to be something else. It is. And then, yeah. Believe it. They, now that they already convinced you to let social workers come in and take your kids. If you spank them, they go to school, you, they're going to come and get you. You said yes to that. And now you're telling the government they can lock up your parents? See how one thing led to another one? Yeah, absolutely. I see it can be a slippery slope. It'll, it'll and just the people that are doing this are evil people. They're not like friendly, loving, God-fearing people. It's not like they're really looking for justice. No, or trying they don't to, care about the yeah, boy they locked really, up or the yeah. parents that... Zero. You gave them power when you did that. Now all parents going to be afraid and they're going to punish their kids in the wrong way because they don't want to go to jail now. Yeah. And the kids are going to be asking, them, did your parents buy you a gun today? <laughs> the schools. Y'all better wake up. <laughs> really, this is, these people are serious. Sean, what did you say to it? I forgot what you said. Um, I, I said I agreed with Joel. You know, maybe that um, um, you know they sh they shouldn't have been charged with that. You know, I think they were charged with manslaughter. Wow. So <sighs> to charge them with what their son did is wrong. But to charge them with like you know being an accomplice to, to they murder, were not an accomplice. I'm, they weren't you know. there when you did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, get, they, they drove him to school and they, hang, they hung outside so he can do, come and run in the car and take off. I'm uh, telling you, I'll do what you <laughs> want, but this is another grave mistake. We are responsible for our life, no one else. But go ahead. I was going to change the subject. Oh. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I can? Yeah. All right, nice. Um, I went to a museum, museum yesterday and... Um, looked at some art. It was pretty cool. I hadn't done that in a while. And um, I was having a conversation with the person I, I went with. And we were talking about how, you know, m modern art versus like traditional art, like yeah. traditional art being like beautiful portraits and c cathedrals and, and stuff that has meaning. And then modern art where you just put like, you know, a piece of wood on the wall and <laughs> call it call it art. Yeah. It had both of those types of things there. And um, it was just interesting. I don't really have anything to say about it, but it was interesting to have that conversation about like, does does art does does art is art objective? You know, is there any objective meaning, or is it just all subjective and relative? And like, oh, you know, I like this and you like that, and it's all meaningless and nothing matters anyway. Yeah, you know? what a mess, huh? Yeah. And then there are people with a lot of money they go to the art show and they're looking at the wall. Yeah. Come here, honey. Yeah, they love talking about it, too. <laughs> honey, what, what do you think about that piece over there, honey? Oh, it's so beautiful. It's just lovely. Yeah, I think that's really nice. And then they're like, come over here, Justin, and tell me what you think. And they're like, what do you think about that beautiful piece right there? I'm like, what? Where? <laughs> that's junk. That's not even art. That's graffiti. And they use all these big words to show right. how, like, what they understand about it. And it's all ego. Y'all better wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Y'all don't see what's happening. You can never agree with the world. When you agree with the world, you agree with the devil. Really, you can't agree with the world. You can be in it, but not of it. You cannot agree with the world. Yes, yeah, Nick. Could I ask a, uh, could I ask her a question, the yes. mother here, about what you were saying earlier? It sounded like you were describing two, yes, two ways of parenting. It sounded like you were describing, like you were realizing there seems to be like an old school way of parenting and maybe a modern way of parenting to deal with what we're talking about. Is that fair? 
Is that what you were getting at? Yeah, a little bit. I like, didn't quite understand. What, can you describe the two types of parenting? What are the difference? What's the difference between the two? Okay, so like for example, um, if I go back to England and I have two sisters and they have a husband and children, maybe one of them is a little bit more like lenient and and more like, oh my baby, they you know they can't do anything wrong and they don't really address anything, right? Whereas I feel like we're trying to raise them. In a sense, I don't want to title it the right way, but I don't know if I'm explaining that properly, but you understand what I'm saying? No, no help. <laughs> no need for help. It got to come out of you. Um, in trying to, like, as things come up, as issues come up, to deal with them at, like, the raw truth of what the issue is rather than ignoring things and, not, and being too lenient and being too soft. And Do you have, like, an example maybe? Um, I don't know, something basic, like they have chores, right? Monday or Tuesday, Thursday, they have their chores. Their chores are supposed to be done. It's not something that I'm going to trail behind them. And also like the discipline, like especially since we've been here the last couple of years, but really in the last sort of six months to a year, I'm making sure that me as a mum, I'm not putting myself on the kids and not trying to force my will, will on the children. And if there's an issue that needs to be dealt with, I just hand it over to Anthony. And he, and they have they know that I'm like, okay, well, if they whine and moan, they don't want to do something, okay, well, this is what I've asked you to do. If you don't want to do it, talk to your dad later. And then they don't even give me the problem now because they know they've got to answer to somebody. So it's just like not being, having not standards, but having certain things in place. I understand. I thought it was about guns. I thought she was saying that the two types of parenting, the old school parenting where you gave them guns and the modern parenting where you see signs and you might have to deal with it. I misunderstood. Oh, okay. I just wanted to understand. Since you have the mic, do you know the biblical question for this week, last week? No, I've been here for like two weeks. Oh. Yeah. Um, so I listened to one show on the car to the dentist, which I am, but I don't know what show that was. Anybody know what the biblical question? You're right. Oh, you know what? It, what was this week's biblical question? Why do you, I might not have it worded correctly, but why do you believe that you're a sinner? Yeah, are you a sinner? Are you a sinner? Oh, no. Okay. Why do you believe you're a sinner? Why do you call yourself a sinner? Why do you call oh, yourself a sinner? Are you a sinner? <laughs> <laughs> I will say that I've changed my perspective on it, and now I don't know. You don't know what? I don't know if I'm a sinner or not. Did I'll you say think that. before you was or wasn't? Yes, I you, thought I was. And why do you think you were? Because going to the Christian church and believing what the pastor said and the experts said. Oh, but now you're not sure if you're a sinner or not. Now I'm not sure. I listened to your perspective and it made a lot of sense. So I'm trying to just watch myself and not just agree with you because a lot of other things in the past have made a lot of sense that you've said. Oh, okay. Are you a sinner? Yes, I am. Hold on a minute. This is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, We're all I sinners. Am. <laughs> We're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. Are you a sinner? I am. And why do you say you are a sinner? Because we sin every day. We no, may not, not sin we. on purpose. About you. Not me. we. Me. I mean, me. And you say you sin every day? Yes. Did you sin today? Um, I probably have. And I just, maybe a certain thought came to my head. Maybe it wasn't a kind thought. That's not good. That's Did a sin. Did you sin today? Possibly. You could sin without knowing it? Yes. Just How? automatic. Automatic. I'm sorry? Automatically. You can automatically sin? Sure, because it's who I am, and I'm trying to change my nature to be more like Jesus. And so who is the person that's automatically sinning if it's like, who is the person that makes you sin? Sandra. Who? <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> and who is Sandra? Me. And tell me who you are. I'm a follower of Christ. Okay, you're a follower of Christ. What mm -hmm. else? Female. I don't know what kind of answer you're, you're looking for. You're a female. Mm -hmm. And what else? A sinner. A sinner. <laughs> oh, man, I feel for you. Hey, what else? Mm, I'm kind. I'm loving. She's kind and loving. 
And what else? Respectful. Respectful. <laughs> and what else? Polite. Polite. Mm -hmm. And what else? Mm, I'm a leader. A leader? Mm -hmm. A leader. And what else? Uh, what else? Tons of things. What are you looking for? <laughs> just, just trying to figure out who the sinner is. So you, you got a lot of demons in you. Uh, you got kind demons. Are you mean to? Kind, kind spirits are not demons. Do you? Are you mean to at times? Uh, not really. Are you mean at times? Mean? Yeah, angry. I don't get angry. Do you get mean at times? No, I wouldn't say I do. So you everything but mean. I have a very blessed life, and I'm very thankful to the Lord for what he does for me and what he gives me. Do you obey your husband? I do. You obey your husband? I do. You obey your husband? I do. I'm submissive to my well, why husband. Why is he shaking his head? No. No, he's not. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Anybody else sinners? I'm a sinner. You're a sinner? Yes, sir. Are you her husband? I'm her husband. And why do you say you're a sinner? I was born sinful. In what way? I was raised sinful. How? Well, you know right from wrong. And when you're doing wrong, you don't know it until you realize it. But if you're brought up in it, Everything is all right. Life is okay. So you say you were born a sinner? Oh, yes. And how were you born a sinner? Because, of, well, my lifestyle. I'm sorry? My lifestyle, my family lifestyle. So you've been sinning all your life? Yes, sir. And why have you stopped? I surrendered my life to Christ. I'm sorry? I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And you did already? Yes, sir. And you still sin after you did that? I do in thoughts. In but thoughts. I, But you know what? I don't sit there and dwell on the thoughts, I, I rebuke them and ask for forgiveness. And then you go back to it later? No, it depends. So like once you ask for forgiveness, do you ever sin again? Yes. You could sin without even knowing. Like say you're driving on the, like you said right now, give them the finger. Well, why would you give somebody the finger? That you don't know what it means? I know what it means. That's why. Yeah. Is that sinning? To me, it is. Yeah. Maybe not to you. No, that is sinning. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any All more right. sinners? The young lady right here. Are you a sinner? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about it. Oh, yes. And why do you say you're a sinner? I have no idea. I'm Could sorry? Yes, yeah, speak to the mic for me. Are you nervous? Yes. What's your first name? Terry. What, is this your first time here? No, we came to you about four years ago. Oh, for okay. Speaking to the mic. For counseling. And so why? Oh, for counseling. Uh huh. And why do you say you're a sinner? Just bad thoughts. Bad thoughts. Mm hmm And are those thoughts your thoughts? No, it's from the deceiver. I'm sorry? Deceiver. And so if they're not your thought, why do you say bad thoughts? Just not good thoughts. I'm sorry? Just not good thoughts. Speaking to the mic. Relax and speaking to the mic for me. You say what now? Just not good thoughts. So why do you take credit for them? You said they're not yours. Just thinking in my brain, my brain. <laughs> Why don't you stop it? Yeah, I'm working on that. Oh, you are, okay. Amazing. Are you a sinner? Uh, for me, I look at it as um, lust, gluttony, and sloth. Are you married? Yes, my wife. So you lust, you are gluttony, and you're slut? Sloth. <laughs> what? Sloth, meaning laziness. Oh, laziness. Yes. So you all three of those things? Yeah, that's what I still have left in me, I believe, yes. And you can't get rid of it? Not easy to get rid of those, no. Why not? Uh, I've just, uh, 
I'm stuck in the, I love food and, uh, you know, I'm just stuck in it. I'm oh, basically okay. just stuck in it. So that's how I see myself as still being a center. Oh, okay. Yes. Amazing. Do you want to be that way? No, I don't. Oh, okay. I don't. All right. Do you sin? Are you a sinner? Now you're asking me off the top of my head because I didn't think about this this week. Um, before I would have said yes. Now I don't think I view it in that way. I think if there's something I'm doing that's not right, I just overcome it. I'm sorry? If there's something I see that I'm doing now that uh, is not right, I overcome it so that I don't have to deal with it. So are you a sinner? No. You're not, and why do you say you're not? Because I see it differently now. Oh, okay. To before. Before, yes, I would have said, yeah, for sure. Nice. Mm -hmm. The young lady behind you died to respond. Wow. Are you a sinner? No, I'm you're, not. You're not a sinner. No. And why do you say you're not a sinner? First of all, because I already forgave the people. Um, just the misjudging. I think that's, you have all those thoughts. And I think just like the lady said earlier, what she was saying about the thoughts, it's, it's not you. So as long as you're able to realize that that's not you, then you're free. Okay. The young man in the blue shirt, are you a sinner? Define sinner. You. Do you want to give me a napkin? Give me a napkin. Oh, we all sh fall short of the glory of God, including I'm only me. talking about you. Uh, yes. Um, uh, oh, geez, <laughs> you've got me over a barrel here. Um, Thank you. Am I a sinner? Um, I guess I would have to say, if I had to say yes or no, I would probably say yes because I've done. You're guessing at it. Well, I mean, I nobody gives a lot of thought whether they're a sinner or not. It's not like I, I come in every day to church and go, "Oh, am I a sinner? Yes or no?" Right? But uh, if I had to say so, I'd probably say yes because uh, I'm far from perfect. And uh, so, are you a sinner? <sighs> yes, I believe I am. And why do you say you are? Oh, because I have uh, certain beliefs, certain um, thoughts, certain emotions that are, are, are not helpful to my life. Right, so um, if you're... Why do you have them? Why do I have these negative thoughts? Whatever it is that holds it, making you sin, why do you have it? Oh my goodness! I mean, like, I mean, like Danielle said, and I mean, like, you you got to have good parents from the beginning. If if you don't, you're on a slippery slope throughout your whole life, right? And um, I definitely had terrible parents. Uh, Mom and dad, of course, were absolutely horrible. So uh, <laughs> I never. <laughs> And I, I, I just uh, rely too much on myself throughout life, and I, I pushed a lot of people. Are you a pe horrible parent? Am I a horrible parent? No, I, are you a horrible parent? Uh, yes, in some ways I was, because my son Hunter has definitely kicked me to the curb, right? I mean, my 21-year-old. So, I, I mean, if you asked him, hey, Dad or Alex, is he a horrible parent, he would say, yeah, he was, because uh, he, I guess I over-focused on him instead of over-focusing on, on my life, and okay. because... So you are a sinner? Yes. Okay. I want to move on because of time. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. Are you a sinner? Did you think about the question this week? I, yes. Are you a sinner? I, Okay, well, I already know that I'm not a sinner. I, I could answer how I know 
to answer based on Being, what you what I've said, right? But right. what do you know? Are you a sinner? Um, not what I said or anyone else. Well, I know, but it's like the not me and the me. Um, because I know you're going to say no one is a sinner, you've never done anything wrong, and all of that. So I don't want to fall into the trap of just saying I'm not a sinner because I know you're going to say we are none of us are sinners. <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> but I'm just saying I already know that. So I'm what I like to do in this realm, in this world here, is not because I think it's dangerous to take on what you say and just say it. You know what I'm saying without knowing it. So okay, here's the answer. I know I'm not a sinner. However, I don't know I'm not a sinner. It hasn't, like, I get it. You say, I know I'm not a sinner, but I don't know I'm not a sinner? I know I'm not a sinner, but I believe I'm a sinner. I, like, I know I'm not, a, I know it's complex, just like everything Be we're quiet, doing here. Be quiet, don't say anything. Like. You listen to another sinner. Right, so let me focus on my answer. So, okay, what it is is this. I have not yet wrapped my brain around how I could, for example, think methodically to do something I know is wrong and then say that that's not sin. And I feel like it gives me an easy way out. It gives me almost a license to do these things and to not have any accountability at all. Yet I, I hear what you're saying about the fact that, you know, we are literally nothing and we've never done anything. I, I, I understand that in a way, in a, in a, like it's, it's hit me spiritually, in a, in, like it's hit me spiritually, but as a, as a human being, the human side of myself doesn't understand that yet. Right. Like I, I'm not, I, I just don't understand it. I don't understand how I could do something that I know is wrong and even contemplate it. It's different if you sin without knowing. Now, I don't, I don't even believe that that's a thing. I don't believe you're a sinner if you don't know you're sinning. That just that doesn't make sense at all. But, but you heard the you church say that, though. The yeah, preacher have taught have. that you can sin and not know it. Right. Okay. I have heard that. And I, <laughs> at one time, believed that. I completely disagree. Like that, I, I have no issue with that. I don't believe that. I think that's false. However... Where I, sh where I ha have challenges accepting this, I guess, is those things that are methodical. Like if I see a shirt at a store, and I'm like, I want that shirt, but I don't have $500. And I say, well, I'm going to figure out a way to get that shirt. And I really ruminate over this, and I come up with a plan, and I get the shirt. And I take it home, and I wear it. I have difficulty believing that that would not be deemed a sin and that I would not deal with the repercussions of that, even well, if I didn't get caught. you can just call it reparation. What's that? You can call it reparation. <laughs> no, because I'm not a victim, so I, w I wouldn't do that. I don't believe in that reparations. That way you have to worry about if you sin it or not. I don't believe in reparations. Oh, you don't? No. Well, they're coming up with the idea that if we're black, we don't have to pay taxes. I like that idea. <laughs> I don't want to pay any more taxes. <laughs> okay. Um, are you centering it? Have you thought about the question? I have. Okay. Can I answer your biblical question instead? That is the biblical question. Why no. are you a sinner? What? No. Why do you call yourself a sinner? Right. Because <laughs> the answer to your first question is I don't know. You don't know what? If I'm a sinner. Do you call I, yourself one? Now, that doesn't make sense. I can't be calling myself a sinner. Do you? No. Oh, okay. So you're not responding to the biblical question? I am responding to it. And what I'm saying is I, I can't be calling myself a sinner. That, that I know. That, that I know that I can't be calling. That doesn't even make sense. Logically, this doesn't make sense. Why am I, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying that I, you're asking me, do you, why do you call yourself a sinner? I'm saying I don't think that's me doing that. I don't know why I would do that to myself. So you don't call yourself a sinner? <laughs> Um, no. And so, are you a sinner? That I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't All know right. how to answer that yet. Oh, okay. Um, yes, sir. So, the, the, the original question went, why do you call yourself a sinner? Right. So, I don't call myself a sinner. Are you a sinner? No. I'm not a sinner. And why do you say you're not? So, number one, the idea of sin it's not like sinning or multiple sins. It's the sin. 
And if you do any research into the scriptures, you'll see that it's referred to as the sin. And what the sin is, is a willful, ongoing rejection of the light. And so because I don't, and that can be perfectly manifested by following the not you, the ego. So if you relate to the not you, you are operating in a willful, ongoing rejection of the light. So do you, I'm sorry, do you sin? No. You're not, you're not a sinner. Right. And you don't sin. No. Okay, because of that definition, what you just said? Well, because I don't identify with the not me, which is the ego, which is oh, that part okay. of me that's supposed to die. That's the part of you that's actually going through the death process and the sin. So if you remove yourself from that, then you no longer are connected with the darkness. Okay. Amazing. Um, are you a sinner? No, I'm not. And why do you say you're not? Um, because um, Jesus already, you know, was sacrificed for my sins. Um, I don't judge people um, as uh, Anthony was saying, the, the light is kind of sh is shown on me. So he's already died for my sins. Um, I don't judge people. So thus, I'm not a sinner. I'm not, and sinners are in hell, and I'm not in have hell. Have you ever sinned? Yes, absolutely. You have sinned? Absolutely. Oh, okay. But you don't sin now? No. All right. Let me talk to that sinner. Oh, God. <laughs> do you, do, why do you call yourself a sinner? I don't. You're not a sinner? I used to be. And you don't sin anymore? No. How is that? Because I've dropped my ego, I don't judge. And every time I, I have that thought of something, I catch it. Because I've asked for forgiveness. You know, I grew up Catholic, and I used to think, oh, you do this, do this. Do and, but ever since I started coming here, I catch my thoughts a lot quicker. And I do something about it. Like, oh, that's not good. And I just, boom. And I move okay. on. All right. Um, here, and then this young man jumping up and down. Um... Do you call yourself a sinner? No, not anymore. And I why not? I changed position the last four months. Why you don't I, call I yourself you a sinner? Thinking of how the thing about the thoughts coming in and whatnot and the actions, and I feel like, like no, I changed my position that I'm not like like he was saying that we're you know if you're not saved by Jesus then you're a sinner by nature. But once saved and you're once actively working that you're no longer Jesus paid that price and you're no longer a sinner, but I, I'll still commit sins, and like Jesus you says, you still commit sin. I will still commit sins. You say I, you do commit sins. I will commit sins until well, I you die. You say I will or you do. I do, and I okay. and I will till I die. But I'm I'm an empty vessel now. You gonna but, sin until you die? Well, I'm human. I'm not Jesus. Did you say you're gonna sin until you die? Probably. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet. I wouldn't bet against it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, blame you, buddy. Right here. Are you a sinner? I don't call myself a sinner. I'm sorry? I said I don't call myself a sinner. Am I a sinner? I, I give in to emotion. So I guess the answer... Are you a sinner? I think so. I'm sorry? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. You're not sure? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, and why are you not sure? Because, because I'm not... I don't think I'm in control of my emotions completely. I mean, I can look back at the last week and see examples why I did things that if someone else did them, I'd call him a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you call somebody else a sinner, but that's yourself. Well, it's just easier to judge other people than yourself. Yeah. Because there's that's always an sure. excuse with yourself. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Frank, Frank, you want to respond? Are you, are you a sinner? So I was brought up to think that, yes. Are you a sinner? Uh, I'm not really sure right now. I'm kind of thinking it through. Because um, I, I was born and raised, you know, Catholic. Uh, you're a sinner. These are your sins. Why are you not all. sure right now if you're not a sinner or not? Because, uh, you know, Christ died once for all our sins. And 
uh, and future sins. So, and then I, I, we kind of know he that. He died uh, for your future sins? Yeah. Oh, make sure you haven't talked with him. <laughs> 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 All right. So you're not sure if you're one or not. So I'm kind of thinking it through. And as I'm thinking it and through. And when you think about, am I a sinner or not? Yeah. Because there's only one sin thinking that you're God, right? It's only one sin. Are you thinking about if you're a sinner or not? Well, I'm thinking it through. I'm just thinking okay. it through, just understanding. And there's, you know, there's only one okay. sin. Okay, we don't, if you don't know where you're a sinner, how are you going to say there's I know only that. one sin? There's only what one the? sin playing God. Okay. Yes, sir. He had to put an answer out there. He felt good. Yes. Are you a sinner? Man, I so badly want to say nope. Um, you want to say no? Yeah. Don't lie. I know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's a difficult one because you. I grew up kind of, I learned that, you know, doing certain things was a sin. Just like most people, it sounds like. Um, so it's like ingrained in there. But I understand a few different things now. So it's, but I, but I kind of understand, I see that I don't fully understand it. So I, I guess I have to say, I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Don't be That's cool a good to answer no, you Nope. That's better than Joel. <laughs> Joel, are you a sinner? I don't call myself a sinner, no. But that's not the question. Yeah, the question is, do you call yourself a sinner, right? Oh, I just... Yes, but he asked a different question. Yeah, I asked a different oh. one. See, he waited to answer the other one. Well, I thought we were on the Bible that's question. <laughs> Are you a sinner? Uh, no, no. And why do you say no? Because I don't see myself, though. I, I don't identify with the sin. It's hard for me even to de identify with the Christian thing. Um, even though I, I understand why we need to say we're a Christian if we're Christian, but I don't, I just don't, I don't see myself, I don't view myself with the negative context of sinner. Oh, okay. And so just because you don't see yourself that way, you're not one? Just because I don't see myself. Even though you want the parents in jail? I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a setup. It feels like a setup. To call yourself a sinner or to identify as a sinner or think sin or any of that stuff. Oh, okay. Amazing. Yes, ma'am. Do you call yourself a sinner? Or why do you call yourself a sinner? I don't call myself a sinner. And why not? Because I feel like I would be condemning myself if I were to speak and think in that way, and I don't have the authority to do that. And are you a sinner? I don't know, but I don't call myself one. Oh, okay. Amazing. So let me do this. I know, huh? <laughs> White people love controlling the blacks. <laughs> it's hard on the black man in America. <laughs> oh. Yes, hey, are you a sinner? Okay. And Sean want to respond. Then I have another question about that. Yes. You're a sinner? Yeah. And why do you say you're a sinner? Because I feel that I am not um, committed to God, and I feel that it's I feel that it's, that it makes me sinful. Because you're not committed to God. Yeah. What is the feeling of being committed to God? <laughs> um, what does it feel like not to be committed to God? Like guilt and doing what I want as opposed to what I, what it seems like I should be doing. Oh, okay. What should you be doing? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, um, like there, like the, you know when you're committed and you know when you're not really committed. So it's like a not committed feeling. Committed to what? To... Praying without ceasing, oh, I see. being present, um, right. taking special time to be, uh, you know, time with the Lord type okay. stuff. 
Okay. Yeah. Sean, are you a sinner? No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> And you agree with Joy out of the parish you go to jail? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Joel's my friend. Oh. <laughs> and so is Jesus. So is who? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I just wanted to point out that I, I think that everybody's answer is a direct reflection of where they are in their spiritual journey. And so it's important that people be honest with what they actually see, not what they think is right. And then in that, the light will be revealed on even this question. Oh, okay. All right. Um, let me see the one. Uh, everybody said they're a sinner, right? Except most people, some people. Jesus said that all your sins are wiped away. If Jesus said all your sins are wiped away, how is it that you're a sinner? think about this one. I'm oh, sorry? I said, let me think about this one. Oh, okay. All my sins are wiped away. How is it that I'm a sinner? Uh-huh. <laughs> you just want to be a sinner. Not. No. That's yours. That's right. Because I see what you're saying. All my sins are wiped away. How is it that I'm a sinner? Because I'm a new creation in Christ, right? That's yeah. what you're saying. I don't have an answer for that. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> honest. Jesus said, all your sins are wiped away. Why do you call yourself a sinner? I guess not anymore. He wiped them away. I'm sorry? <laughs> he wiped them away. So you're no longer a sinner? No. Uh, well, but why were you calling yourself a sinner? Okay. Knowing that Jesus said all your sins all are wiped away. All your sins are wiped away. Right. Say murder in the heart. You think bad of somebody. Hatred. Hatred. I don't well, have hate, but I'm, I'm saying something went wrong. So the thought is out there. That's To me, that's sin. Maybe not to you, but me. That's why I but call Jesus myself. But Jesus said all your sins are wiped away. Okay, then I guess I'm okay then. He wiped them away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right? Why do you say you're a sinner when Jesus said all your sins are wiped away? Because I feel like I'm falling short. You want to be in the mic? I feel like I'm falling short. Short of what? Short of following uh, in Jesus' footsteps by uh, my vices. But he said, all your sins are wiped away. How can you fall short if all your sins are wiped away? I think I can still uh, sin. So even though he said you, that you can't, you don't believe him? Well, I think still, you can still sin. But he um, said you can't. Well, maybe I'm not fully reborn then, you know? Maybe you I'm not that? there yet. I'm not. I'm what do you mean by that? Uh, I'm not. I'm not done with my journey. And what's your journey? Overcome my vices, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give her the mic on the way to the bathroom. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> Jesus said, all your sins are wiped away. Why do you call yourself a sinner? Right, that voids out everything I said earlier, pretty much. It does. And I do, I totally understand what you're saying, Jesse, but, you know, as I'm on this journey, I really do want to be honest with my, right. myself. Absolutely. Not I don't, just intellectual. Yeah, I don't want to just say it. Because for a while in the beginning, I found myself answering these questions based on what I knew the answer was 
per, because you had already given the answer. You give the answers to these questions on a regular basis, but still, if I'm not, if I don't see it for myself, even though I know it's true from a spiritual point of view, I don't want to fall, because to me it feels very dangerous to just say it because but you say it. when I say don't be, don't hang on to the intellect, don't just do it, don't let the devil start telling you, oh, you're just saying it because Jesse said it. Right. He'll, he'll, he'll do that to you too. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. He'll say, you just repeated Jesse. That's a good point. It's so tricky because he's so shrewd, yes. and that's what makes it so... You know, it just makes it so confusing. I was having a conversation with someone, not to digress, but just real quick on this Jesus is God thing. And this person was pulling up scriptures, and I clearly saw that there is absolutely nothing where he says that, but the person was seeing that. So it's sort of like that. Like, And I didn't want to convince this person because I agree right. we should see it for ourselves. Yeah. But anyway, in terms of the wiping away of the sins and all of that, I'm still, I know I'm, I believe I'll get there, but I'm still getting there to yeah, the where? point where I totally believe, well, the sinning thing, because I do feel like if, if none of us are sinner, if we're, if we're not, if we don't, if there is no sin, then, and people are doing all these things that are deemed horrific in some cases, like, there are no repercussions for that. Is everyone just going to heaven? There's just nothing that's going to happen. <laughs> There's no, like, justice that's going to take place. Oh, okay. It's just, so that's what I have trouble with. Maybe you can talk about okay. that later. I'll, yeah, I can't believe this time going by so fast. I got a, yes, Joe. Yeah. I was going to say, um, you know, I'm realizing that, um, that just being conscious is enough. And when we, even if we like do these quote unquote sins, the consciousness of it is what's wiping it clean. It's like the light of God shining on it. So I think if we're conscious, there is no sin. You know, even if we go unconscious, being conscious about us going unconscious is still the light of God. So yeah, I think it's, it, it comes down to just being aware and observing yourself and allowing yourself to be free Make mistakes, live your life, but just observe yourself to understand why you're doing the things that quote unquote are sins. Okay. Um, I, uh, I counsel with a lot of people around the world, and I had no idea the destruction that the devil is bringing up on human beings. I had no idea. I, I knew the devil was busy, and I knew he was doing things, but I had no idea. I was counseling with someone this week, and when they told me the hell they were, I was stunned. I didn't know that was possible. But the devil is your enemy. And I was talking to one young lady, a lady, I don't know how old she is. She had told me that she started a business, and I hope she's watching. She said that she started this business, and her business was doing so well, she decided that she wanted to be uh, uh, not Mother Mary. What's the name of that old woman that died? They said Teresa. 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 They, yeah. She was, some people said Mother Teresa was a nasty person. Yeah. Why some people think she was nice. But anyway, she decided to be a Mother Teresa and she started hiring all her friends and she hired family members into her business and that all hell broke loose. She did everything she could do to help them. She really wanted to help. And then they almost destroyed her company. They turned on her. They gossiped about her. One of her family members became jealous and mad and, and started turning employees against her. And, and they went down the road and started the same kind of business that she was doing. And that it was just literally a mess. Um, and she didn't understand why, because she was being nice. She was trying to be Mother Teresa. And I'm like, well, and she was like, I can't understand how they turn on me. I gave them money. I gave them a job. I did this for them and that for them. And I'm like, well, why don't you understand it? You didn't do it because you loved them. Yes, I did. Stuff like that. 
I'm like, no, because if you love them and they turn on you, it wouldn't bother you at all. You would not have been expecting anything back. Zero. Except for the people do their work, you hire them. But when they turn on you, you would have just said, oh, okay, bye. No big deal. I want you to know, I, I can't believe what the devil is doing through human nature. Nobody loves nobody. Is that the proper way of saying it? Nobody loves nobody. No. Nobody loves anyone. No one loves anyone. No. no one loves anyone if you're white. And if you're black, nobody loves nobody. There is no love. Human beings do not have love. Human beings are evil. Every human being is evil. Everyone is evil until you start working on yourself. Now, there are those who start to recognize, I'm evil. Anger is evil, right? And they go and apologize to their mother and their father, and their hearts start to change. But the devil is tormented. The people who rob the bank and people who steal and kill, the devil is making them do that. It's not them. So what you don't know, all of your sins have been washed away. That's why when you apologize for being angry, for judging your parents or whomever, your heart is made of love, which is the nature of God. And then the nature of God starts working on the vices, which is of the devil. The old nature is not you. You and I have never had an original thought. We have never done anything of ourselves. We don't know what we want. We cannot never do anything. It's the devil working in the imagination and emotions that have caused you to do everything you've done. You have never done anything wrong. It's just that you think you are your thoughts. God said bring every thought into captivity. And then you think you are your thought and feelings because you're not conscious. You're not present. You're not aware. You're in your imagination Thinking about the past or the future, which is the place where the devil dwells. He wants to keep you in the past, which doesn't exist, or in the future, which doesn't exist, instead of being here. Because here you'll be present with God, and you will see that you're not a sinner. You wouldn't even think about it. You would be of love, and you would know that this old nature is being destroyed. It's not you. The rapist, the murderer, the child molester, the, the man that beat his wife and the wife that beat her husband, uh, whatever, the worst of the worst, it's not them. It's in the head. It's in, God said, bring every, captive, every thought into captivity. You're not your thought. You are really free. You're not a sinner. But the church, you go to the church and they read the Bible and they say you're a sinner. And you're going to always be a sinner. And you're going to sin without knowing you're sinning. They lie to you. Be aware of the Bible thumping churches. They're lying. They're infidels. They are your enemy. They're teaching you the wrong thing. They are keeping you in hell where they are. And hell is inside the imagination. And then you carry it out. So it's outside too because you do what you think. And you end up creating a hell for yourself. You're not a sinner. You're free. It's been done. It's just that you are, have identified with hell, and you have all these teachers telling you that you are a sinner. They read the Bible for you and tell you, in, in the Bible it says that if you're born of God, you cannot be a sinner. You can't sin or anything, but the preacher said, yes, you can. You can sin without knowing it. You can't sin without knowing it. If there's no you to sin, how can you sin? Christ said it is done, it's all wiped away, and we are literally free, but you are believing the devil. You are believing the teachers in schools. You are believing your parents. Your parents say you're a sinner. The parents say, oh, I'm a sinner. And you're like, yeah, mom and dad, I'm a sinner too. And you grow up, so as a man thinking, so as he is, Christ came and he bought us back from sin. And he said it's all wiped away. And, and, and now you got to overcome the devil. You are insane. Anyone that believes thoughts is crazy. You're mentally ill. You're crazy. 
because you believe a lie. The devil tell you, to, and then you fall for the feelings. You think that you're your feelings. Those are all belong to the devil. It has nothing. It's in your mind and body, but it's not in you. You are not your thoughts. You're not your feelings. You're not your body. You are all these different layers. I ask people, well, who are you? I'm a singer. I'm a dancer. I'm a Christian. I'm a, I'm a patriot. I'm a, an abortionist. I'm anti-abortion. I'm a bank robber. I'm black. I'm white. I'm this. All those are evil identities that you identify with. And all those identities are straight out of hell, all ego, and they are keeping you away from knowing who you really are. They're keeping you away from freedom. Because as soon as you say you're a patriot, now you're at their margin. We are children of the Father. What are you fighting for? I'm fighting because I'm a patriot. Well, why is the world still going to hell and we've all been fighting every generation fight for a patriot? Ain't nothing changed. Matter of fact, it's worse. I mean, we used to protest to be patriots all up in Washington, D.C., <laughs> all in front of the abortion clinic. Ain't nothing changed. But I was fighting for the unborn. And I felt righteous about fighting for the unborn. And the more baby being killed now than ever. Ain't nothing changed. I remember Isola Foster, Barbara Cole, Terry Anderson, those are old fighters with me. They did. But nothing changed since they died. Everything got worse. And the reason that it got worse because the hell is in the individual in here. And however you believe you are, that's what you're going to act out and impose your hell on others. Your hell is in you. Somebody can call you a name. Let's say somebody, a, a white person, let's do it the way that they love it, the people love it. Let's say a white person walked up and called me the N-word. Anybody ever be called the N-word? Oh. One white man been called N-word. <laughs> you know, they'll mess up. But let's say that somebody called you the N-word and you get mad and emotional about it. It wasn't the N-word that did it. It was already in you reacting. But if somebody called you the N-word and you just, oh, okay, let it pass, let that thought pass, it won't move you at all. Not at all. But if you, get, you think about it, then emotions come, and now you're acting out, that's where the problem is. You're worshiping the devil. And there are layers and layers and layers of identities the young lady gave me some stuff, that she, but she's none of those things. Those are what she do. Those, it's not who she is at all. We don't know our identity until we overcome the old, the fake identity. You're not a sinner. You're free. God is not judging you for anything because he knows that it wasn't you. Something else is driving you to think and feel and do what you do. It's not you. Why would you just think about this? If you were in charge of your own life, why would you give yourself a negative thought? Why would you give yourself a thought that would bring on fear? You would give yourself all sweet, lovely thoughts. You would never create a bad thought. You would never create an angry thought. If you were in charge, just think about that alone. You're not in control of anything, but let's say you think you are. Why would you tell yourself, I'm a, those are my vices, as the young man was saying. Those are not your vices. That is the nature, old nature of the devil that came from anger. When you were lost in darkness, you were unconscious. So I recommend you stop calling the devil anything to do with you. That's not yours. I promise you it's not you at all. And the moment you stop claiming it, as somebody said, it's over. But long you claim it, so, you, so it's a, what, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? And the devil make you call yourself these things. And the world and the preachers and the churches, they up there to help you to be that because they're in hell. I was looking outside when they had the, the eclipse thing. 
I knew some of the Christians were going to be outside so they could be taken up. <laughs> Anybody stood outside to be taken up? How about when you ran in your house to be taken up? So I ran outside to see anybody going up. I ain't seen nobody going up yet. And they're like, one lady told me in counseling, a young lady too, she's like, Jesse, Jesse, when is the end time going to happen? I'm tired of waiting on the end time. She stressed over the end time. She thought this was it. I'm like, lady, the only thing that happened the other day, the sun went between the moon and the earth, and that was it. Ain't nothing that'll happen except in your mind. It's in your mind. God said to bring every thought into captivity. Every thought. Paul said, my thoughts are not my own. So I stop because I realize they're not mine. Something else is driving me. The devil is in the thoughts. And as Joel mentioned earlier, you got to be conscious. You got to be in present. Instead of lost in your head and being in present right here, right now and all the time, God will kill that old nature. Because it's of the devil. It's not of you. He would take, he would destroy it because it's darkness and it is evil and it hates you. It wants to destroy you because you're children of God. And since the devil can't get at God, he's trying to hurt God by destroying his children. Paradise is right here on earth. And when you die, when you drop your body, if you drop your body with these false ideas, you're going to be stuck in hell. Ain't no way out. The way out is right now, right here. It's right here. You're not a sinner. You're free. Christ came and made that. All your sins have been wiped away. It is done. So if somebody wants to call themselves a sinner, let them be in hell. Because that's what they're saying. I'm in hell. And yes, you've done things. Things have happened through you, but it wasn't you. So there is nothing to be taken credit for or be responsible for because except for the law of the land. You're not going to be punished by God. You're trying to take credit for something that you had no control over. You didn't do it. It worked through you. So, and the devil wants you to say, well, if I do something silly, I do something wrong, there needs to be some accountability. Now, if you rob the bank, and the bank, they catch you, they put you in jail. But that's, take, you know, that's a punishment. But God's not going to punish you for robbing the bank because he knows that it wasn't you. And whatever you think, you bring it upon yourself. There's no accountability to take if you're not responsible for anything. The world tells you to be responsible. You've got to be responsible. And so now we all try to be responsible, screwing up everything. Responsible for what? The only thing we have to do is see that we are angry and we must forgive. And when we forgive, God will forgive us and draw us in into the kingdom and the work began. It really will. But you're not a sinner. And the devil doing all, I can't, I can't tell you what the devil doing through people. I had no idea. And they think it's them. I had a Chinese lady call me for counseling. Chinese lady. And the devil told her the same thing he tells everybody. He speaks every language. Oh, he speaks every language. And he had her living a miserable life. All her life she'd been in hell, she said. She like, I've been, I've, it's just been awful. But when I heard you say, forgive, and that it's not me, instantly she felt better. Because she was able to see. She thought it was her. The devil is doing everything that he did in the Old Testament. He's doing it right now through human beings who think that it's them. Look at, that. Look at what's happening on earth. It's the Old Testament. There's nothing new on earth that's not in the Old Testament. Because it's working through the people. They think it's them. The devil working through human beings to hurt one another, to gossip, to try to destroy they are working for the devil. There's a New Testament. It's inside of us. There's a new reality. There's a new world. It's inside of us. And we got to live from within and start living from here. 
You got to start down the devil. You are not sinners. You can be free. God has never judged you. He never will. Because he knows it's not you. It's in your body, but it's not in you. And you're not your body. So stop identifying all these things. And, you know, I, I was thinking about how Christ, Christ uh, rose and then he died. Remember when we see these movies where Christ is carrying the cross? And he like, he carried the cross on his shoulder, right? He was like, you seen Christ do that, right? It was so heavy. It was so rough on him. He looked like he wasn't going to make it, right? That's the same cross you're going to have to die with. You have to bear that cross. You got to, you got to never look to feel good, but feel bad. You got to feel as bad as you possibly can feel. You got to have fear overwhelm you to look like you can't bear it. Then Christ will save you from it. He will destroy the devil. You got to stop looking for feeling good. Feeling good is not peace. You must die. You must carry this cross. And no one can do it with you. You got to stop being afraid of dying from the ego. It's going to be heavy, heavy, and heavy. And God said, come as you are. Come with fear. Come with doubt. Come with insane, insane mind. Come with loneliness. Come with shyness. Come with embarrassment. Come with losing your reputation. Come with all, and I'll save you from it. Because it's not you. It's a false identity. It's evil. It's the spirit of evil. Lay down your plans and let him take over. Wake up by forgiving, and the light will come on, and it will destroy the darkness. And then you got to learn to, by being aware, when I say learn, I mean be aware. Watch those thoughts, and when they come, let them flow right through. Let them pass. They're not your thoughts. And if you get caught up in this, say your thoughts fall down into emotions into the dirt of emotion, you feel emotional about it, go through that too. It's not you. Your thoughts are your enemy, your emotions are your enemy. But you got to watch, you got to watch. And I'm telling all of us, me, every human being that overcome this, this is what we got to go through. In order to live, we must die. If someone messes up your reputation and you feel all nervous and shy, feel it, take it. It's a false identity anyway. Nobody cares about your reputation. And only you, and it's fake, and now you're working very hard to have a reputation. Don't have any identities. A reputation is, two, is about two hoops that are holler from hell. Well, it is hell. And when people gossip about you, everybody gossip about everybody. Nobody like nobody. Nobody like. You can go to lunch with somebody, and then as soon as you all grinning up at lunch, acting like you're having a you know, really good time, praising the Lord or whatever, right? As soon as you get out of your car, I ain't, I don't like that. They, they on a trip. Look how they try to act like they're bad at somebody. <laughs> everybody gossip about everybody. Just think about it. Everybody gossip. It's a false idea. You don't have a reputation. And stop listening to these preachers teaching you the Bible. They're not supposed to be teaching you the Bible. They're supposed to be pointing you back to the Father. And when you read the Bible, don't read it to remember. Pick it up, open it, because the Satan is going to interpret. He's trying to be, pretend to be God. He's going to interpret the Bible for you. And you'll walk around quoting the Bible. And stop trying to save people. You can't help nobody. You can't even help yourself. Stop trying to help people. People take advantage of you and they'll destroy you. And then you wonder why I was so nice to them. I loaned them money. I did this and that. How can they do that to me? You did it because you wanted something from them, friendship, or you wanted them to make, pretend you were good, or you wanted something. It wasn't free. You were not doing it because you were a good person. 
You were doing it because you wanted something from that person. If you didn't want anything, you wouldn't have to do anything. If you wouldn't have to do anything, there's no pain. You know, amazing. Every human being with the ego is about self. You're not about you. Don't love your kids. You don't love nobody. It's all about you. If the kids don't do it the way you want them to do it, you yell at them. Didn't I tell you to take that trash out now? Because the kids didn't do what you wanted to do right then. If you love the kid, you say, "Hey, take your trash out and forget about it," and the kid would do it. But because you, you didn't do it at your time, it's something wrong. The ego must die. Everything you're looking for is right here, right now. It is done. And the, and the schools are screwing up the kids. Look at the kids protesting. They don't know in the world what they're protesting about. They're attacking. With this war going on with Israel and the Palestine, those kids don't know what they're talking about at all. Somebody... It's telling, it's whispering things in their ears about this war. Come on, y'all, let's protest. And they're going out there protesting. They have no clue. They don't know they've been lied to. Both sides lie. But they protest. And they feel good about it. Because now they feel like they're committed to whatever country they came from. And those countries can get two cents about them. So in closing... One last thing, fear. Fear is not of God. God did not give you fear. Fear is of the devil. Anyone that has fear is of their father, the devil. Just know that. You're worshiping the devil. Fear, God even said, I don't give you fear. I, I, don't give, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. But Satan give it to you, and then you blame God for it. God has, we are free, except in the mind and emotion. And don't let anyone tell you that emotions are good. Emotions are evil. The so-called good ones and the bad ones are evil. They're not good. God's love is a dispassionate love. You don't feel it, you live by it. You walk by it, the light. And it's everything. It's pure energy. It's pure life. And there's no fear in it. Oh, and one last thing. Do what you want. And the reason I know this too, because I ask everybody I counsel with, do you pray? And they're like, yeah, I pray. Pray to the Lord. And how do you pray? God, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Have mercy on me, Lord. Please save me. Oh, Jesus, I'm in pain. Save me. Uh, I want a wife. I want a husband. I want money. I want to live in the valley. Uh, <laughs> I want out of the hood. I want reparations. I want whatever. Stop it. Stop whining to God. In reality, though, you're not even whining to God. You're whining to the devil. God doesn't need you to do all that. He needs you to take control of your life by being aware. And everything will be added unto you. And it will be amazing. You already own it. Everything in the world belongs to the children of God. But the children of God are praying to the devil. Get off your knees crying. If you're going to be on your knees, don't cry. Just be aware. But don't cry. You don't need to. All right? Stop crying. And begging. <laughs> what? Stop being a victim. You're not a victim. You're free. All right? So stop begging. Be still and know God. Go and forgive your mama. Every human being needs to forgive their mother. And no such thing as a, a good mother. She did the best she could. And forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother so you can return to the father. And when you return to the Father, the Father will take over. God will. But you got to forgive your parents. you got to. As long as you have anger, you're not going to have freedom. It just ain't going to happen. And watch yourself and stop trying to save people. Stop trying to help people. Let people live in their hell. Let them suffer. 
Let them suffer. We have to run the, the homeless people off. I, sometimes they hang out. No, I ain't going nowhere. I'm on there. I own this sidewalk, or something they say. I'm like, okay, you stay there. That's all I need to say. But listen, you are free. You're not a sinner. You're saved. Christ has done it. He wiped away all of our sins. And whomever tell you that you're a sinner, they are lying to you. They're lying to you. They're talking about they're, they're in hell, and they want you in hell with them. Your family members, your so-called friends, your church friends, your party friends, your neighbors, your government. Your government is evil. I have a lot to say about that. And they say, your government, your media people, they want you in hell with them. Your so-called leaders, get rid of all your leaders. Don't let any human being be your leader. Put no one over God, before God. All right? So here's what I recommend. Forgive. Forgive your mothers. And don't tell me you ain't got my mother was nice. No, she wasn't. I don't care how humble your mother is. Oh, she was such a quiet, humble person. That's the worst one. Forgive your mothers. I'm sorry, Mom, for resenting you. I realize now I'm being angry at you. You can't help yourself. Forgive your father. Things will start to But you got to admit, to confess your sin means that I am angry and I'm wrong. It's of the heart. It's not of the vices. It's of the heart. Admit you're wrong. You don't even have to tell the world, but admit in your own heart that you're wrong for being angry. And the rest will start to happen. That's the sin is to judge. Play God. All right? So here's what I recommend. Forgive. Before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive. And you must forgive your parents first. Right? They couldn't help themselves just as you can help yourself. And then be aware. Do the silent prayer. And just, this is you. These are the thoughts which are all evil. He's going to bring you out. Once you forgive, he's going to draw you into the... There's another world in us. It's so amazing. You got to live from within, but I don't have time to get to that. He's going to bring you out of here so you can see the hell that you've been living in. All thoughts, all lies, all the time. It's hell. It's pure hell. It's misery. And he's going to let you, he's going to call you to watch it. And then he's going to destroy all of those identities. He's just going to wipe them out. So you have a clear mind and there's nothing to identify with. All right? And so while he's doing this, the devil's going to be having a fit. Where's God now? Why is it taking so long? This is so hard. This is so difficult. I can't make this. This is painful. It's not you saying that. This is the devil saying that inside your mind and body. Watch how he scream and yell because he doesn't want to depart from you. He want to live in you. He live in human beings. All right. So don't argue with him. Don't discuss it with him. The devil. Uh, don't ha- just watch him. And then he's going to send your family members. He's going to send your so-called friends after you, too. They're going to come. I have not met one person yet that's overcoming, and their family members and friends have not turned on them. They're like, Jess, I'm more lonely now than I was before. I'm like, great, because you were lonely then and didn't know it. You have never had any friends. It's just a word. And so... The devil's going to scream, he's going to sin, but even with the demons that come in other people, don't argue with them either. If they call you names or whatever, just say, oh, okay, thank you. Don't argue with them because you're arguing with the devil. Let them say what they want. There is no law that says you have to reply to anyone. You don't owe anybody an explanation. No one. So let go and let life happen. Let it happen. That makes sense. You are free. Stop calling yourself the children of the devil. The devil want you to do that. You are sons and daughters of God. And you are free. There's no need to suffer anymore. But you got to stop thinking it. All those thoughts, none are from God. And they're not from you. Any questions about that? That makes sense a little bit? In what way does it make sense? Well, <clears throat> I understand that um, Jesus died on the cross for all my sins. Yes. And I'm a new creation in Christ. Yes. Yeah. 
So don't call yourself those things anymore because that's what the devil wants you to do so he can destroy you. Yeah, what you said too, it remind me, because in the word it says um, we should be like little children. And you said, don't take responsibility and all that. That's what a kid does. Yes. Like you correct him, and, but then he just goes on and plays like normal. It, the being responsible for what he did doesn't even stick in there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's deep. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. You are not responsible. That, made, that helped a little bit? Any other thing about that? That made sense? Yes. Stay with that. Mm -hmm. I don't care if your whole church, all 5,000 members that are center, don't you claim that. Because they're worshiping the devil. Right. They're all worshiping right. the devil. Christ died for us, and it's like it was a waste of time. Right. What are you saying? Tell me, too. Oh, you don't want to know. No, I do want to hear it. I said I got to go to the bathroom again. Oh. <laughs> No, I didn't want to hear that. What do you think about this now? I, I totally, I, I get it. I, something shifted. I get it. I, um, I've decided I'm going to stop saying it's complex. Yeah. And just take it easy. It's, it's simple. Do the silent prayer. Stay present. Watch the thoughts. So, yeah, I, something really did shift. And I, and I want you to... Really pay attention to that because the devil will take whatever he can and twist it. Yeah. He really will. He'll have you say, oh, I'm not going to listen to Jesse. I'm going to know for myself, right? You know what? When I have to share this real quick. When we were talking about the mom and the child, I, the, all of a sudden I got very fearful. And the devil was like, you need to get up and walk out of here. This is so, the, you need to leave now. And then I started to feel it. Yes. But I just... I let it pass, but yeah, thank you. You make a point, and I want to really drive this home. The devil does not want you to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. The devil, the devil, tremble at the truth. The devil doesn't want you to know that you're free. He doesn't want you to know who he is. He doesn't want you to know the games he play on you. Yeah. He because even with the sin thing, I'm feeling like the guilt that comes with that, as you were talking, I'm like, that's the devil. Yes. You know, it's... The devil, ugh. he calls you to do stupid stuff, and then he condemns you, and you think God is doing it. Mm -hmm. Or you think you're condemning you. You're not condemning yourself. It's the devil doing it to you, but you've identified with the devil, so you think you're doing it to you. Exactly. Yeah. You know, what a mess, huh? It really is a mess. Thank you so much, Jesse. You're welcome. The devil does not want to, he doesn't want you to know the truth. The truth is the devil's enemy. He doesn't want you to hear the truth. He knows you're hearing it right now. He's working overtime to make you doubt it. He is. Right now he's talking to you. He's like, no, but you do sin. No, but you are responsible. No, but you're not. He doesn't want you to know it, and he's trying to talk you out of it right now. Those thoughts that you're hearing are not yours. Every th voice in your head is of the devil. It's not God. It's not yours. It's the devil. He doesn't want you to hear the truth. He doesn't want you to be still so the truth can take over and guide you. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Does it help a little bit? Yeah, it does. Um, so do you think my uh, like overeating is just going to naturally go away? Or yes. All of that if you become aware of it, when you sit and eat, be aware that you're eating. Don't go unconscious. Don't be seduced by the food. Because food is, as I've said before, the last thing that men have to overcome is sex and food. Yeah, I agree. You, you heard that the best way to a man heart is through his stomach? Yes. That's how your woman control you. <laughs> she, she, she I don't have to cook anymore. Nice. Well, now you can overcome it. All right. So here's what I suggest. When you see yourself eating like that, don't have any opinion about it. Don't call yourself anything, but just watch it. It's the, it's the watching that would take it away from you. 
and to bring everything into moderation. You eat normal. I'm telling you, you'll find yourself eating in the right way. Yeah. But yeah. don't you claim it as you. That's what the devil wants you to do. Some of my vices were taken away cold turkey, and so I was worrying about these. Are don't they fight. Go away, you know. Don't fight with it at all. It's enough to see it. You want to see it that it's talking to you, and it's trying to make you feel a certain way. But don't fight with it. Just watch it. Don't right. call it you. Don't. Call, it's all spiritual. It's darkness that's trying to destroy the light in you. So just notice it, but don't call. Don't feel bad about it. And also, don't tell anybody about it. Stop talking about it. All right. Don't go around with your little buddies about, oh, I, I love to eat. I'm a, I'm a this, I'm a that. The devil wants you to do that. Don't do it. That'll keep me in it. I'm sorry? That will keep me in it. Yes. Keep talking about it. Yeah. Absolutely. And don't struggle with any vices because it's the old nature that you fell into when you became angry. You escaped into hell trying to survive. Now you're coming out. So stop calling it you. Just watch it. Right. That makes sense? It does, yeah. Whatever it is. All right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you some pushback, Jesse. So I can't, I can't walk out of? Okay. No. Yeah. Stay in the line. <laughs> yes, You're sir. You're sinning if you cross that line. Go ahead. So um, I'm going to give you some pushback, okay? So when Jesus said that your sins are forgiven and you're free, right? Who was he talking to, though? All human beings. No, he wasn't. He was only speaking about people who were born again. And so if you are not born again, your sins are not forgiven. That's not true at okay. all. Why would you tell a born again person to sin or wash away? He was talking to the sinners. He came for those who were lost. That's he was not talking true to the all. sinners. You just said it. Right. Sinners. They were sinners before. Well, you are still sinners if you are not born again. What? You are still a sinner if you are not born again. I don't know what that means. He was talking. Well, how, did, how did that relate to what we were talking about? Because you're telling people that they're, they're free and they don't have any sin. And that only applies to people who are born again. It doesn't apply to everyone. Oh, okay. That's wrong. Okay. Everyone, the moment you apologize for hating, playing God, you stop playing God, right? You try to face it, you're fine. You change your heart from anger to love, and you are fine. Once that happens, because what happens is when you change your heart, you wake up. Anyone that has anger is asleep. Your eyes are open, but you, you're not conscious. You're in the darkness because the light is not on yet. The light is not on. But when you can see that you have the anger and you forgive, the light comes on. You draw you in, and you will see that it has never been you. It was never you. Never, ever, 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 ever. Christ came to save the lost. I'm telling you, folks, listen, give it a try or stay in your hell. No sweat off my back. I don't, whatever you do is on you. If you notice, God leave you in your hell. If, if you want to be go out there and live a hell of a life, do you think God try to stop you? He does not. Once in a while, he'll give you a little warning, but okay, you want to stay in your hell. I was over at the Cafe Mocha the other day. I saw he and Jesus over there getting some Cafe Mocha. I'm like, why don't you guys care about this thing? He's like, we've done all we can do. All you got to do is want to wake up. If you want to wake up, you will wake up. You got to want it. You got to want it. And let all your ideas go. Have no plans. And I'm not talking about practical plans. You want to go to on a vacation, you plan to go on a vacation in July. Why here's your mind? So you said we leave it on the first. We're going down to Georgia. Georgia on my mind. And we're gonna stay for a week or two. Once you plan that, you don't have to think about it anymore. But all your ideas about God and about everything need to be gone. And just live your life. And life will work on its own. Do not try to make a relationship work. No relationships. If they don't work naturally, drop them. You can't make a relationship work. 
There's no such thing as give and take. It's kill and kill. <laughs> if it, God got our life laid out perfectly, and when we give up, it will work perfectly. It really, really will. All right? Last word. Amazing. Anthony reminded me of a question I actually did have for you. So are you saying, would it be safe to say that if a person is agnostic, atheist, Buddhist, once they forgive, once they go and, you know, apologize to their mother and dad or whatever, um, or not whatever, but once they do those things, then that's when God can begin to work on them and direct them to exactly where, where they're supposed to be, which is in Christ. Absolutely. Okay. He said that... Uh, before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive. And, and it's agnostic, atheist, whatever. You, those are just titles, just names with no meaning. It, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel better than a Christian to think that you're agnostic. Mm -hmm. Now you're judging a Christian. And then it makes the Christian feel good by judging the agnostic because they feel like a Christian, so they're better. It's just all ego. Yeah. So, all, all titles are wiped away when you overcome that. It's all ego. Got it's it. all vanity. Which is why you're saying you don't need to be born again. You just need to forgive. When you these when, are titles. Born again means you just come into the light. Okay. You've already been taken care of. You're just dead in the darkness because you're in darkness with the unforgiving heart. Got it. But it just means you're coming into the light. I understand. Out of the darkness. All right. Yeah. Amazing. What do you think about this? Amazing. Did it help a little bit? <laughs> Did it help a little bit? A lot. Oh, stay with it, all right? And stop believing those thoughts. They're all lies. And they're inside of you. They're not out there. Everybody else has their thoughts living in them, their hell. But your thoughts and your hell is inside of you. And there's nothing another human being can do about it. Your husband can't do anything. Your friends can't do anything. Your clubs can't do anything. You got to overcome it by watching it. And don't call it you. All right? Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. I was talking to someone who said that they are Jesus. At first they were saying they were Job. And then they said, and the other day they called me and said that they were Jesus. Oh, God or something. I'm like, don't call me no more. You're crazy. I said, I want, and they kept quoting about it, quoting about it. I said, no, you crazy. You ain't Jesus. I'm like, this is your name. I know you. No. I'm like, oh, you crazy. I'm like, if you want to talk to me again, you got to admit you're crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you are free. Let the thought pass. And to the lesbians and the homosexuals and the and the transgenders and the, and the what? And the baby killers and the whatever. It's not you. Don't join a group that tells you to identify with them and their thinking. You're going to suffer like them. It's spirits that made a home of you because you resent your parents, especially your mother. Go and forgive. Don't identify with that. Don't join these groups and these clubs. They're going to draw you in and destroy you. All right? Stop identifying with it. Keep your body apart. Cause you may wake up and you're like, what the? I don't think you can get it back when you take it off, right? Nope. Right. right. So stop it. It's all spiritual. It's no different than anything else. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Um, oh, what's the biblical question? The biblical question is, are you afraid of criticism? Do you have a fear of criticism? Do you have a fear of criticism? All right, that's the new question for this week. Do you have a fear of criticism? And this message today is for all people, blacks and whites and Chinese. Stop fighting one another over stupid stuff. It's not even real. All right, you're none of those things. Be free. And thank you all for your support. I appreciate it. And thank you all. That was amazing today. Thank you. Amen.